Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for a special masterclass on women's health. My name is Britt with Forum Health, the first nationwide network of integrative and functional medicine providers. For those of you not familiar, Forum Health goes beyond traditional healthcare by combining functional and integrative medicine with advanced treatments and technology, data analytics, and collaborative relationships to offer our patients personalized and transformative results. Our patients have exclusive access to breakthrough treatments, results-driven wellness programs, health content, and a team of experts to partner with you on your journey to a healthy and vibrant life. To learn more, visit us at forumhealth.com. All right, let's get started. Our panelists tonight are Amanda Moss of Forum Health Greenville and Tracy Elishevsky of Forum Health Madison. Amanda is a board certified nurse practitioner through the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners. She approaches, approaches patient care as a collaboration to find out what works and what doesn't for each patient. Amanda treats a variety of issues, including menopause, hormone imbalance, gut health, and sexual dysfunction. Joining Amanda is Tracy, an adult gerontology acute care nurse practitioner with prior experiences taking care of the sickest patients in the ICU, neurology, and internal medicine. Tracy has a unique passion for helping patients find the root cause of their health issues and digging deep to restore their quality of life, helping them feel their absolute best. Her specialties include thermography, gut health, hormone balancing, and thyroid therapy. Welcome, Amanda and Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering all of our questions tonight on women's health. Um, I know we have a lot to cover, so let's just dive right in. Um, First off, we're gonna start with hormones. As women, we experience hormone imbalances throughout our lives, as we all know, um, particularly during perimenopause and menopause. Um, so Tracy, I wanted to start with you. Can you tell us some of the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause? Yeah, so I think of perimenopause before menopause. Um, this typically occurs in the 30s and the 40s. Um, typical lab findings will show low progesterone with normal or elevated estradiol, um, estrogen dominance, um, of course, and then, of, and then, and or low progesterone to estradiol ratio. Um, symptoms typically include irritability, mood swings, depressed mood, low sex drive, um, poor sleep, weight gain, heavy periods, shortened cycles, um, night sweats, um, fatigue, hair loss, and brain fog. And then menopause commonly starts in the late 40s and early 50s and beyond. Um, typically, we'll see low progesterone with low estradiol, low progesterone to estradiol ratios. Um, overall, hormones are low or sometimes non-existent. And then mm -hmm. symptoms typically include hot flashes, night sweats, low sex drive, vaginal dryness, weepy or depressed food, anxiety, um, insomnia, and sleep disturbances are big. And then irritability and joint pain are probably the most commonly I see. Okay, that's great. That's a long list um, of very uncomfortable and, and painful symptoms. Um, Amanda, besides menopause, what else causes hormone imbalances in women? So there are a couple of different causes of hormone imbalance besides uh, menopause. Um, one of the biggest being uh, excessive stress, whether that stress be um, a mental, uh, emotional type stress, or that be physical stress. Um, and along with that goes an unhealthy diet. So if you're eating a lot of high processed foods, a lot of sugars, a lot of starches, um, then that's a stressful toll on the body. Uh, a lot of toxic buildup can occur. So that can also uh, cause an imbalance, um, as well as thyroid and adrenal dysfunction. So if you have any problem with the thyroid gland, any problem with the adrenal glands, adrenal fatigue, along with that excess stress, then that can affect all of your hormones as well. Um, uh, two other big ones um, in younger women, polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCO, PCOS, whichever you prefer to call, um, can also contribute to abnormal hormone levels. And then certain medications with the biggest one that young women are taking being uh, combined oral contraceptives. Those are going to alter the normal hormones in the body and they're also synthetic. So you're going to have alterations in what your normal levels will be. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. It's a lot to think about in terms of what affects your hormones. I think most women don't even realize their diet stress plays a part in it, um, can really wreak havoc, you know, on your hormones. Um, Tracy, I want to go back to you. I know you mentioned insomnia. 
particularly as women go through menopause, so many women complain of this. How can women regain a peaceful night's sleep? Um, Because I know that affects sleep affects your overall health and your stress levels. So what can women do about this? Absolutely. And I think you nailed it right there, overall health and stress. So typically I look at a couple of things when I'm talking about insomnia. Um, I like to address the adrenals and then secondly, and usually simultaneously sex hormones as well. Um, So typically we look at your adrenals or your cortisol, your stress hormone to see how your body's handling your cortisol. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times that many women will come in and they'll say, I can get to sleep, but I can't stay asleep. Or what I commonly hear is I wake up at 2 a.m. every morning. I can't get back to sleep. And that tells me that we really need to look at your adrenals and support them a little bit um, better. Um, We do this through nutraceuticals or adaptogens, and then also finding a way to get into your regular routine, kind of how do we address your stressors? Um, it's the biggest, the biggest thing to talk about. And then at menopause, our women, or our hormones start to decrease. So progesterone is typically our very calming, our anti-anxiety hormone. This plays a huge part in your central nervous system regulation. So this improves your GABA receptor function, reduces anxiety. It's very neuroprotective. There's so many great things about progesterone, um, but it yeah. promotes normal sleep patterns. And so while it also at the same time, it's also lowering your nighttime cortisol levels. So balancing these is necessary to help your sleep routine or your sleep patterns. Um, right. We can use things like nutraceuticals. We recommend things, melatonin, which is also a lot of other great benefits like immune system support, um, things like magnesium. And then of course, we can also add progesterone in as well. Okay. That's great. Um, and yeah, it's, it's so critical. So it's wonderful to know that there is help for anyone who's struggling out there. Um, Amanda, I want to ask you, with hormone imbalances, how do you test that, um, that at your clinic with women? So generally, if a patient comes in and they're presenting with their complaints of, you know, the symptoms that Tracy talked about, hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, then we start with a blood test. We generally stick with serum. That's going to give us the most immediate results. Um, we can get those test results back in 24 to 48 hours. Um, that's our typical lab turnaround. Now, if you have patients who we have identified a previous issue in, and maybe we're not, we're getting uh, not the optimal numbers that we think we should be getting, we have the option in special cases to do salivary testing, um, but that's one of those that's a special case-by-case basis. It's not our general way. There are also urine tests um, that you can do, but they're not entirely accurate um, because of the other metabolites that pass through the kidneys. So we generally do not do a lot of urinary testing in our clinic. Okay, that makes sense. Um, And kind of going along with with that question, Tracy, what can women do to balance their hormones in their everyday life? And really, how do you feel like an integrative medicine approach to balancing hormones helps and is, is kind of an optimal path to go down? Yeah, I think the the greatest thing about integrative and functional medicine is the specialist testing and things like that. So uh, as Amanda was talking about, like get testing done first, right? Like we need to see what we're dealing with Um, and then balancing it comes down to starting simple things like dietary interventions, making sure you're eating a balanced diet, including proteins and vegetables and less refined carbs and sugars, um, drinking enough water. So to help your body naturally detox and making sure you know, one of the biggest things I look at is your gut, because I think that's super important in the overall health in general, but it's right. very hard to balance your hormones if you're not having, you know, adequate bowel movements or your gut needs further support as well. So I think the best part of my job is looking at you as a whole person and not system by system. Um, I'm a big believer that the body works as a whole. And if one system is not balanced efficiently, I don't, and I can't expect other parts of the body to work as best as it can either. Yeah. I mean, you, that's so well said, because it really, you're getting to the root cause of why women are having these issues in their life. So you can actually fix, fix it from the root instead of just putting a bandaid over the symptoms ultimately. Yeah. Um, well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much you know, for just teaching us a little bit more about hormones. I know a lot of women out there are struggling. So that was great information. Um, So next up, I want to talk about weight loss, which is another pain point for women. Um, Amanda, so for women who are frustrated, they've tried everything to lose weight. They still can't shed those extra pounds. What could be the causes of this? Um, so, uh, you know, to kind of build on what Tracy said with integrative medicine, we're looking at optimization of the body systems because if one system is not working properly, another system can be affected downstream. 
So we kind of take it from um, a multi-directional approach. Um, the first thing we start looking at is we start looking at labs for hormones. What other symptoms are you having that could indicate a hormone issue, whether that be thyroid hormone issues, um, sex hormone issues, adrenal hormone issues. Mm -hmm. And we kind of pinpoint what labs do we need to assess from that perspective. And so if we identify a problem there, the first step is to correct that issue. Um, because otherwise you're going to have weight gain. If you have a thyroid issue, if you have an adrenal issue or you have a sex hormone issue, um, the second uh, approach that we take again, to build on what Tracy said is gut health. Gut health is so important. Um, you know, your gut microbiome has to be balanced, um, probiotics, you know, making sure that you're not having symptoms of leaky gut and having that increased permeability that's going to cause overall body inflammation. That overall body inflammation is going to lead to more toxins being absorbed in the gut, which is going to just kind of continue that cycle of increased fat storage, clogging up the liver and more body inflammation. Um, so we're looking at all of those hormones, the gut detox, and then a big one is just dietary modifications. Um, make sure that you're, I always use the term, it's not really a diet, it's a lifestyle and it's clean eating. It's not cutting out refined sugars, cutting out those processed carbs. I always tell patients shop on the outside perimeter of the grocery store. Don't mm. go on the inside because that's where the I junk like is. That. I like so, that. I mean, that's smart. <laughs> it's just, that's the best way to go. Um, you're going to yeah. get your vegetables. You're going to get your dairy. There's a little bit of protein meat right. and you're staying away from all that processed food. Yes. Um, such a good I, tip. The other thing I always tell patients, if it's in a package in a package, you shouldn't be eating it. Mm. So if it's something inside of a plastic bag inside of a box, it's probably not something you should eat. It's highly processed. Right. Um, so you've got to clean up the diet. And then um, for those women who, you know, we've optimized our hormones, we've done, done gut detox, um, we've cleaned up the diet and we're still having that extra weight we're trying to get off. What we do here in our clinic is we offer a semaglutide weight loss program. That is a weekly um, peptide injection that you perform at home. Very similar to an insulin shot. Um, we have a program that we do um, here, like I said, for weight loss. We've had patients lose up to 20 pounds in two months and up to 50 pounds in um, a five month period. So that's for those patients who we've optimized everything else and we're still trying to get some weight off. We have that program available. Wow. I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible. 20 pounds in two months is amazing. Um, and I know I've, I've heard people on, on semi-glutide have had amazing success. So, um, and like you said, everything comes back to the gut too, in a lot of ways and yes. what we're eating, putting in our, putting in our body. Um, Tracy, just going back to you, what are some of the programs and services your clinic offers to help women reach and really maintain their weight loss goals? Yeah. I'm going to piggyback kind of off what Amanda was talking about. So first thing I do is balance hormones. So we get some labs done. Um, we're looking at overall optimizing your health and wellness. So this makes sure, making sure all your hormones are balanced, talking to another efficiently. Um, you know, so many women come in and say like, you know, I'm in a calorie deficit. I still can't lose weight or I'm walking five miles a day. Um, I've been increasing my exercise, but I still can't lose weight. So optimizing overall health is first because otherwise we're just continuing to fight an uphill battle. Um, so one of the first things I do is I get a good set of labs, look at all of your inflammatory markers, making sure you're not insulin resistant, um, making sure your hormones are in check. Like I said, this includes your thyroid, it includes like a, a very thorough thyroid panel, a very thorough, um, sex hormone panel. Um, and then overall, just making sure that again, like Amanda was saying that your gut is healthy. So we're not fighting an active infection or candida or something like this that makes weight loss harder. Um, so just making sure overall wellness is first. Um, I think one of the greatest thing that Forum Health has is actually health coaches, which I think is super unique to Forum Health. Um, so, you know, we have excellent health coaches that meet with you virtually to figure out what roadblocks you've hit previously and what stopped you from getting the results in the past. And it also helps keep you accountable. Um, they communicate directly with providers on a daily basis as well. And so we're all on the same page. And I really think that this gets you results better. Um, and so they have a lot of really good like tips and tricks along the way to just overall information to help you succeed as well. Um, and then again, like Amanda was talking about our clinic also just um, launched the semaglutide weight loss program. Um, it's gotten um, a lot of great press recently because it is working. It's, it's shown a lot of great promise for weight loss. Um, and so uh, as Amanda was saying, it's, it's a once weekly injection. I say the most common side effects is nausea. 
Um, but with that said, we do start at a, a lower titration schedule to try to avoid that. Um, and um, definitely something that is very promising, we're excited about. Um, and if you want more information, obviously, we'd love to talk with you and, and see if it's a good fit for you. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a, a ter terrific program. I know I've seen a lot of success with it with people I know. So um, I think that's wonderful. And kind of going back to detoxing, Amanda, I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you kind of mentioned the gut health a little bit there. Um, and detoxing is one way of helping women, you know, to lose weight. What exactly is a medical detox? And how is that different from other detox programs out there that you might pick up at the health food store or online? So um, gut detox, like a medical gut detox, uh, uses a systematic approach. Um, it has targeted nutrients that help to eliminate those toxins and also heal the gut. They also generally, um, our medical detox helps to support the liver as it's trying to filter those toxins out of the body. Um, we use pharmaceutical grade um, supplements um, they're tested in clinical trials, and they have actually been shown in research to reduce CRP levels 40% in a five-week time period, and they can reduce overall symptoms, whether that be gut symptoms or even joint pain, joint inflammation, by up to 52% in that same time period. Um, and so that's the big difference between a medical-grade detox and something you just go get off the shelf at Walmart or, or a pharmaceutical right. store. Um, the other thing again, to piggyback off of Tracy is health coaching. When you do a medical grade detox, you're getting health coaching. So you're learning how to clean up your diet. You're also learning what food sensitivities you may have that you didn't even realize. Um, you know, if, if you go and eat something and immediately you have GI symptoms, you know, you have an issue with that, right. but sometimes you may have low grade inflammation from something that you don't realize is occurring until you do an elimination and a gut detox. And then when you start adding back those items, then you say, oh, wait a minute, now there's an issue. This is what the issue is. And it helps you to identify those issues and how to eliminate them from your diet. Absolutely. And I know detoxes sometimes aren't fun, aren't really something people look forward to, but afterwards you feel so much energy, you feel more alive, you know, you, um, you just kind of have your life back again in a lot of you, ways. And the bloating has gone, everything, all those symptoms that you have really start to disappear. I mean, just when I, I started at Forum Health, just a, a, a personal tidbit, I started in August. It's required for new employees to do our detox. And I've done pharmaceutical or I've done uh, non-medical grade detoxes in the past. And when I started our program, um, I was taking a Nexium every day. I had really bad acid reflux, but I eat a pretty good clean diet, but was still having all of this acid reflux. So when I did our five week gut detox, my Nexium, um, my Nexium was able to like be placed in the cabinet away and I'm no longer on it. And it's been six months and I've still not had to go back on this um, medication. So, wow, that's amazing. I know I personally did it myself too. I've done it twice now, our, our GDRX gut detox uh -huh. program. And I was drinking coffee all the time, a lot of caffeine, and it was difficult to let go of it. But afterwards, I'm I'm no longer on caffeine. I'm all on herbal tea. So it's really changed my, my lifestyle and my stomach feels a lot better too. So yeah, they're wonderful, wonderful programs. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you both talking about that. You know, I, I think a lot of times people don't realize that uh, losing weight is also tied to your gut health, like everything else. Okay. Gut health is everything in so many ways. So I appreciate you mentioning, mentioning that. Um, Kind of switching gears a little bit, I wanted to now move on to women's sexual health and some of the challenges and obstacles women face as they age with their sexual health. Um, Amanda, I wanted to ask you, you know, oftentimes women, as they age, they can experience difficulty with being intimate with their partner, um, especially as they go into menopause. Is there anything women can do to increase their sex drive, their libido, and really get their mojo back? So if we have, a, you know, that's one of the most common complaints that we get um, when we have women who are going through that perimenopausal or menopausal phase, they come in and they say, um, I'm driving my husband crazy. I don't want him to touch me anymore. Um, and so that's a, a big indicator that there's a hormonal issue going on. Testosterone is very, um, it, it's, it's the sex hormone for that drive, that urge. Um, so that's, kind of clues us into that there may be a hormone balance there. Um, and so we have to balance that first. Um, without that testosterone, you're just, you're going to have that decreased libido. So we have to replace that. 
Um, so that's step number one. Um, once we've optimized those hormone levels, um, if we have women who are still, you know, complaining, uh, they continue to have, you know, that decreased libido. There's a couple of other things that we do recommend. The first one being oxytocin, it's nasal spray. Um, and what that does, it's a, it's a hormone as well. Um, and it's pretty painless, it's just a squirt up each side, but it helps kind of stimulate that drive again. The second option would be a cream that you do apply um, vaginally or to the vulva that kind of helps with um, stimulating that um, libido. It actually can also increase your orgasm intensity and also helps with vaginal lubrication. It's called screen cream. So um, cream. I like that. That's very catchy. <laughs> it's got a pretty catchy name. Yeah. Um, and we can get that through a compounding pharmacy. So okay. Well, that's great. It's nice to know that there are options, um, you know, particularly as you age, you know, so that's an enjoyable part of life, obviously, with your partner. So um, yes. kind of piggybacking off of that, um, I know women also experience vaginal dryness, which makes intercourse painful and uncomfortable, um, kind of compounding that, that issue with intercourse. Can anything be done to make sex more enjoyable again for women? Uh, yes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that they're, um, I don't like synthetic lubricants. A lot of women have um, allergies to that, or they'll have some alcohol in it, which will actually be drying in the aftermath. Um, so I want to make sure that women are using a really good natural lubricant. Um, my biggest recommendation is coconut oil. And I always tell women, well, it's also got a good smell. So that's true, <laughs> you right? get a bonus Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, the scream cream, it does help with that vaginal dryness. Um, there are a couple of other um, prescription um, type uh, things that you can do. One being uh, estriol suppositories, which is just a little extra estrogen to support that vaginal tissue. Um, you can also use hyaluronic acid suppositories. Um, and then there's a cream called Jolba. And you can use that for overall vaginal health. Um, and then the last thing that we do, and it kind of piggybacks off of the last question um, as well about um, increasing your libido, um, we do the vaginal rejuvenation shot here in our office. What that involves is it involves using PRP. Um, and when we do that, we're taking that from the patient themselves and we're re-injecting that and that increases blood flow and it helps generate healthy vaginal tissue. It can increase things such as arousal, your sensation, the frequency and strength of your orgasm. It also can help with incontinence and vaginal dryness. So that's kind of another uh, option that we have that we can offer patients. That's wonderful. Cause that was actually my next question was talking about urinary incontinence because so many women find themselves maybe not making it to the bathroom enough time or leaking urine when they sneeze or cough or laugh. Um, so that's great that PRP is able to do that. Is, are there any other options for incontinence? There are, you know, unfortunately, we, we with just general body aging, childbirth, menopause, we have, tend to have that pelvic floor basically start to sag. Um, and so to kind of lift that back up, we have a device here in our clinic. It's called the Encella chair. Um, a lot of times you'll see it advertised as the potty chair um, because it does kind of look like a toilet. You sit it does, on it right? fully yeah. clothed. Um, it has a Tesla coil in the inside of the chair, and we have an intensity monitor that we can turn up the intensity. And what it does is it helps stimulate um, the, the pelvic floor, and it is equivalent to, uh, I want to say somewhere around 11,000 Kegel exercises in a 28-minute wow. session. Wow, so it's, that's amazing. It's way more than you're ever going to do in a day. <laughs> way more. <laughs> a lot easier. Yes, a lot easier. And so we have that device. Generally, we recommend women come in for two sessions a week for a total of six sessions. It is actually FDA cleared for urinary incontinence, can be used in men and women, 95% of patients have a significant improvement in their incontinence. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's, I've had women who've come in who said they were spending thousands of dollars on incontinence pads every month or, or excuse me, every year. And mm -hmm. that this has been a game changer for them. Um, but, you know, kind of back to hormones, not to keep going back to that, but 
estrogen. You've got to have estrogen to kind of keep things lifted up um, for that good vaginal health as well. So right, it all ties into each other: gut health, hormones. Yeah. Everything is everything's connected. It really is, and that's why integrative medicine is so key because you're looking really at the whole person. So um, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I, I'm sure that gives people uh, or women a lot of hope who are struggling with those issues right now. Mm -hmm. um, so next up I want to talk about is thermography, which is often described as an effective alternative to mammograms. Um, so Tracy, I wanted to ask you first, can you explain to our audience who maybe isn't familiar, what is thermography and how exactly does it work? Yeah, so thermography uses infrared imaging techniques to detect areas of dysfunction or concerns in the body by imaging hot and cold areas. So the reason that this is important is that a change in temperature is one of the first signs of disease. So it's very easy to get done. It's painless. It's non-invasive. Um, there's no radiation involved, and it literally just looks like a big camera. Um, so most commonly, we image breasts, but we do whole body thermograms. Or we can image any area of concern, like if you have a pulled muscle or injury. Um, some use it as an adjunct in chemotherapy as well to monitor to see if treatment is effective. So lots of things it can be used for. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty much widely, anyone can have it done. Um, it's very safe. There's no radiation. I think those are the biggest things. Okay, that's huge. And I guess my next question was going to be, what's the difference between thermography and a mammogram? And I, you kind of answered that. It sounds like there's no radiation um, and it sounds like it's, you know, probably less painful. Are there any other differences between the two? Yeah, so thermography can pick up signs of inflammation, which is missed by mammograms and mammogram uh, okay. temperature patterns. So Mammograms can only will show dysfunction after there has been a change in density of the tissue. So pathology or such as the case with microcalcifications or where a tumor has formed. Um, it can also, it images the actual breast. It cannot pick up areas further up on the breast or axilla areas of concern. So studies have shown that thermograms can actually pick up areas of concern about five to eight years prior to where the cancer would or could show up. Um, wow. So we always recommend thermograms as an adjunct to mammograms. It does not replace mammograms, but right. for young females who have dense fibrous um, breast disease, or disease or women with implants, um, thermo thermography is a great alternative to, for monitoring for sure. Absolutely. Think, Five yeah. to eight years is significant. Absolutely. Um, and so the great thing about thermograms is too, is that after we identify that area of concern, we can try methods such as lymphatic massage or overall support your body to deal with the inflammation in general, to get rid of, or at least decrease that area of concern before it develops into something worse. Right. No, that's, that's amazing. Um, who is safe to get a thermography scan? Is it anyone? Are there some people where maybe it's off limits? Most everyone. Um, the only contraindication really is that a full body thermogram and, um, should not be performed on anyone during pregnancy or while lactating. Um, okay. There are two, I would say, prostate and testicular screenings. Like It's not really recommended in that. It's not recommended for that. Um, but okay. otherwise, anyone can get it done. Okay, that's great. And, and how long exactly does a scan take? Yeah. Um, you know, if we're just doing one area of interest, it can take 15, 20 minutes. Um, otherwise the whole body scan can take up to an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and if, you know, if a woman is interested in getting scanned, how often, um, should she get that done? Um, yeah, we recommend, um, a baseline scan and then we okay. rescan at three months just for that comparison to your baseline. Okay. And then if your imaging results show that you're low risk in developing pathology or, or everything looks okay. We recommend yearly scans at that point. Um, okay. And of course, if you have something kind of pop up in the interim, um, or if you have any area of concern, you can get imaging done at any time. Okay. That's wonderful. I mean, that's a really, really great and sounds like a very effective alternative. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. I, I know a lot of people may not have heard of thermography or don't know exactly what it is. So I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, and, you know, finally, now that spring is around the corner, it's next week, um, I wanted to talk about skincare, which is something all women, we struggle with <laughs> throughout our lives. Um, so Amanda, I wanted to ask you, you know, women, particularly as we age, um, we experience dry skin, definitely after starting menopause, what can we do to have that soft, youthful, supple skin that we had <laughs> back in our earlier days? So, um, kind of the same thing, vaginal health, estrogen is good for everything. You've got to have that estrogen on board. Um, you'll notice 
that when women go through menopause, if they do not do hormone replacement therapy, they start to have increased signs of aging, especially in their face, increased wrinkles, that collagen decreases. Um, they've got to have estrogen on board. So again, that's step number one. Um, there are a couple of other things that we do offer here in our clinic. Um, so we do recommend or we do offer microneedling in our office. Um, microneedling is a great exfoliator, helping to turn over that top layer of cells. Um, and we also combine it in our office with PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. What that does is it kind of helps plump up the skin. It's not going to make you look like you just had fillers put in. Um, it's not going to do anything drastic like that. You'll see the movie stars who they obviously had the fillers placed. It's not going to do that, but it can, it can be a good natural alternative. Fillers are toxins. They are something that your body has to absorb over time. Um, and so, you know, a lot of women who are uh, into integrative medicine, that's not their go-to. That's not their first line. So PRP is a natural way to do it. Again, it's your own blood. You're not introducing a foreign substance into your body. And it can actually help stimulate new collagen. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good um, option. We also do um, have 85% improvement in women with fine lines and wrinkles. Um, it's not going to help those big crevices, but again, fine lines, wrinkles early on, um, in addition to replacing hormones, helps with that tone and that texture. Um, the other thing that we always tell women is to make sure that you also have a good skincare line. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're using a retinol versus a glycolic acid versus a vitamin C or a combination of the three. We do have a line that we carry um, within Forum Health. Um, it's our own brand. It's called Ageology. Um, we have some really good products there. They use um, a lot of all natural type, um, type ingredients. Um, not as much synthetics, not a lot of fragrances, things like that. So it's really good for men who have sensitive skin. Um, there's specific products for them. There's specific products for patients who have psoriasis or patients who have eczema or rosacea. Um, so we have a, a, a large line for those type of women. Women who are also having acne issues because you do have some acne concerns. Um, and so we have a line for that as well. So a lot of different options there. Um, you know, that, that's kind of our big go-tos for that. That's great. I mean, they're, they're all things I want to try and would love to have done. So they're great. Um, Tracy, kind of a similar question. I know we hear a lot of complaints about women, particularly over the age of 50, complaining they're having breakouts similar to when they were teenagers. Um, what do you do at your clinic for uh, when acne comes back, um, do you have any special treatments or anything that can be done about it to help people that are, are suffering from acne? Yeah, I think the first thing that we've kind of been talking about is balancing your hormones, making sure that all of your sex hormones are in line. They're not in excess, like sometimes testosterone or um, a specific type of testosterone um, can be kind of out of out of line. So we make sure that those are balanced. And then many other things can contribute to acne as well. Um, hormones, gut health, stress, liver dysfunction, all those things kind of go into my, my, um, my consult if, if it's acne is the problem. So my typical approach starts with treating the gut or looking at the gut, making sure that there's not active um, infection. Um, so hormones play a role in this because if you're not detoxing or cleaving your hormones appropriately, like if you have gut dysbiosis or leaky gut, they can contribute to this. Um, they essentially, your hormones essentially build up or they continue to circulate in the system. So finding and addressing the root cause behind this is important. So I always recommend making sure your body is detoxing efficiently along with, along with this. And um, as Amanda discussed earlier, the GDRX is um, very beneficial for this. Um, and then ageology as well. Um, we don't offer that at our clinic yet, but we're hoping to eventually, so. That's great. Yeah, because it really does, whatever you eat seems to show up on your face oftentimes. And I know when I went through the gut detox program, my skin looked great for the first time in a very long time. So that's an added bonus to kind of help you through the, the detox um, portion of it. Um, and then Amanda, finally, I wanted to ask, do you have any secret anti-aging tricks that, that maybe you can share with our audience? So that's the every woman's favorite question. Um, <laughs> what can I do to all, to maintain that youthful look? Yeah. Um, you know, there's just a couple of basic things, you know, always making sure you wash your face before bed, making sure you take all of your makeup off, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. 
Um, and then good skin starts from within. Like Tracy said, you've got to have um, that good diet. You've got to have that good, good gut microbiome, making sure you're not consuming a highly toxic diet, making sure you're drinking plenty of water, um, getting adequate sleep, at reducing stress levels, whether that be through yoga, meditation, whatever your your alternate is, and then using a sunscreen every day. Sunscreen, yes. sunscreen, sunscreen. And lastly, the biggest thing, um, I'll refer to Suzanne Summers. Um, she's a lifelong hormone user and says she will until she's in the grave. Um, if you guys haven't seen her talk about hormones, look her up on YouTube. She has a fantastic video and she says that she will use hormones literally until she's in the grave. Estrogen yes. promotes yes. thicker collagen. It helps reduce fine lines and wrinkles and you've got to have those hormones. Yes, it makes sense. It all makes sense. Gut health and hormones. That's what it comes down to and just eating really well and taking care of yourself. Um, thank you so much, Amanda and Tracy. This has been so, so educational and such good information. Um, I now want to open up the class to questions from our audience because I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there after everything we discussed. Um, let's see, we have one that just came through. Um, okay, so bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. How long does this last? Oh, good question. Um, I think, I mean, it lasts as long as we're, as we're doing it. So, um, you know, we, when you're on bioidentical hormones, we obviously monitor you, um, depending on the clinic and the provider, sometimes it's more frequent and sometimes it's, it can be longer. Um, if you've been on the hormones for longer, we can kind of, I always tell my patients, like when we're starting that it, it's kind of, it's trial and error until you find that sweet spot that works for you. So, um, right. you know, it's, it's kind of up to the patient too. I mean, I have a lot of a few patients that I've seen that they're like, you know, I'm getting a little bit older. When do I stop them? And I would say that most people, when they stop them, they want to go back on them because they, they notice yeah. that they age very, you know, more pre, you know, faster, I would say, right. or just right. don't feel like themselves. So, um, right. definitely dependent on the person for sure. Right. And like Amanda said, follow Susan Summer. She looks yeah. great. And she's got to be what 80 yes. now she looks fa fabulous. Yes. So do yeah. them until you do them until you're in the grave is the answer. Um, <laughs> another hormone therapy question came in. How quickly will I see the results from hormone therapy? Um, Amanda, I don't know if you want to take that one. Sure. Um, so I, um, I have women who we generally tell them you're going to start seeing those effects in that seven to 10 day range. If you're doing pellet therapy, um, you know, we do a lot of pellet therapy in our clinic. Um, so generally seven to 10 days, you're going to start to see that effect of you're going to have more energy. You're going to have that vaginal dryness is starting to lessen. You're going to have less hot flashes, less night sweats. Um, you're going to peak at about six weeks after your implant generally. So when we start a, uh, a patient on pellet therapy, a new patient, we generally bring them back in for a recheck of their labs at six weeks to kind of see where their levels are and make sure that they're on the appropriate dose. And that helps get our therapy. Generally, just to kind of piggyback on Tracy, we often see patients every three months um, on pellet therapy while we're getting them up. Uh, loaded, I guess you could say, um, right. where we're trying to figure out what that sweet spot is, what they're, where they're going to be happy, where they're going to be symptom uh, free. And it goes along with the integrated mindset. What works for one patient is not going to work for another patient. It's very individualized and you cannot look at a lab number and say, oh, well, your labs are good. So you should be fine. You have to take into account those patient symptoms because it's just like before you go through menopause, we don't all have the same hormone levels. We don't all have the same testosterone and estrogen and progesterone. And what makes me happy premenopausal is not going to make someone else happy. Um, right. And so it's very individualized approach. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, everybody's different. That's why integrative medicine is so key because you're really looking at that person and delivering very, very personalized treatment and evaluation and results that you wouldn't necessarily get elsewhere. Um, Oh, Tracy, one came in for you about thermography. Do I need a referral to get a thermography scan? No, you do not. Um, I think that's another great thing is that you can get them, you know, when you want to. Um, and right. I think the more information we have, the better. So yes, you do not need a referral. Okay, that's great. Um, 
here's one about semi-glutide. I know people are very, very interested about this after you said those amazing results in two months. Um, so are there any negative side effects of semi-glutide? I know you mentioned nausea. Is there anything else um, people should be aware of? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Tracy. Oh, go ahead. Um, <laughs> so we, um, the, t the big four, um, this is what I tell every patient, the big four are GI things. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. And this goes back to diet. If you're eating a lot of fried or fatty foods, you're either going to have constipation or diarrhea. If your body's trying to get rid of the excess glucose, you're going to have diarrhea. Like you sit down and eat a birthday cake and eat the whole thing. Um, if you're eating a lot of things um, like fried fatty foods, you may slow the gut system down. Um, the nausea comes into play because semaglutide can cause some nausea. What we do to combat that in our clinic is... We do offer patients the option of a prescription for Zofran. Generally, patients are going to see that nausea the first 12 hours after uh, injection to the first three to five day range. Mostly those first three days is when you're going to have those peak of those, those bad side effects or, or those bad um, uh, adverse reaction type things. Um, so we tell patients kind of dose on those days anticipating that if this is, if this is what the side effect is going to be. I know that I don't want to be on work on Monday in a meeting all day if I just right. dosed yesterday. Um, the other thing that we do to combat some of the constipation issues is um, we prescribe, or not prescribe, but we supply all of our patients on the semaglutide program with a supplement that we have that is our own brand. It's called Colonies. We mm -hmm. provide them with that as part of the package so that you're not Saturday night can't go to the bathroom, haven't, uh, you're constipated, it's an emergency now, you already have no heat. We give you the instructions on how to take it, when to take it, so you already have that. That's um, and then another one is hypoglycemia. So we do recommend the patients have a glucose monitor um, because semaglutide can drop your blood sugar. That's one of the ways that it works um, by keeping you from storing excess glucose. Um, so it will drop that blood sugar some. And um, we want to make sure that patients have a monitor on hand so that if they become hypoglycemic and we educate them on what those symptoms are, then they have a monitor to be able to check that and know what to do in the event that they have a low, low blood sugar. Right. So you really set people up for success and kind of we do. prepare for any of those symptoms that they might have. And again, that's, they may have these symptoms. They may not have all mm -hmm. of them. They have one, the severity mm -hmm. ranges, but you really make sure people are successful when they take some glutide, which is great. And kind of piggyback on that too, if yeah. you don't mind. Um, so contraindications to semaglutide would be um, like a type one diabetic. If you're on insulin, um, people with a history of gastroparesis or pancreatitis are more prone to have those symptoms happen again. So those are always a consideration. Um, and then any history of thyroid cancers or a super rare neuroendocrine carcinoma. Those are things that we, we obviously discussed too um, prior okay. to studying that. Okay, that's great. Oh, another one came in for semi-glutide. Um, after semi-glutide, how do I maintain my weight loss results? It's a great question. Yeah, um, so when you're starting semaglutide, and Amanda, feel free to jump in too, but along with this, like it's not like a, it's not magic, right? So you still have to put in the work. You still have to be doing the other things. You still have to, you know, and I think that's one of the things we do with our program is we recommend health coaching visits along alongside of this so that you have that accountability. You're still doing things that are going to set you up for success long-term. Um, the, one of the great things that the studies did find was that people who were on semaglutide had a longer, um, they were able to keep off weight longer, um, mm -hmm. compared to others. So, um, that is one thing to keep in mind, but you still have to do all the right things. Like we can set you up for success. Right. You have to, you have to do things, um, continuously once you're off of it. It's not, you know, right. Yeah. You can't be eating donuts while you're getting your injections, just so you know, right. You have to take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to take care of yourself. Just to piggyback off of what Tracy has said, um, we do, we actually, in our program, we, we kind of built out our program based off of other clinics and the successes that they've had. We do require patients to actually have three health coaching visits, um, one of which has to be before you're, you can start the peptide injection. And the reason being is because we want to optimize your success. So we want to make sure that when you come off of this medication and our program is 11 weeks, that when you get done at your 11 weeks, 
if you've reached your weight loss goal and don't want to continue into a second session, that you're maintaining that weight. But you've got to put in that work. You've got to clean up your diets. Um, and I tell every patient, gut detox. You've got to detox. And so actually, I wish I had the poster, but we have a really good poster. Um, when you have excess um, toxins in the body, what the body does as a protective mechanism is it helps to store those toxins in fat cells. So what will happen is it takes the sugar that you're consuming and it stores it stores it as fat to dilute those toxins out. Okay. So when you start to lose weight and you reduce your fat levels, those toxins are more concentrated in the body. So when you stop semaglutide or when you change and go back to your old eating habits, then what your body is going to say is, oh, I've got sugar. I've got these toxins. I've got to dilute these back out. Let's put the fat back in. And so that's what it's going to try to do. It's going to go back to storing that glucose. And that is where yo-yo dieting comes into play. That's where that up and down, those big swings right. and those weights um, is from, you've got a detox. Right. Comes back to detoxing. And actually somebody just wrote in um, and said, I am on semi-glutide for a month now. I don't have any side effects. So that's from someone who's currently on it, a current patient. Um, I've also uh, have lost inches. So that's wonderful in case anybody's curious. So you don't necessarily have to have those side effects. Um, this person also wants to know, can you recommend a good sunscreen? Which is a great question. Uh, yes, actually we have a really good sunscreen uh, by our ageology. It's something that we carry. Um, just a personal, I like to tell patients personal stories so that they know that I'm actually connecting with them from a patient perspective as well. I was diagnosed with melanoma at age 19. Um, I didn't wear sunscreen as a teenager. So I'm a big proponent of physical barriers, um, not, I try to avoid chemical barriers, again, toxins. Um, so anything with zinc, but we have a really good product in Asiology. We have a really good um, sunscreen barrier. Um, it doesn't have a lot of additives in it. It doesn't have a lot of fragrances, a lot of chemicals. Um, and so it would be my biggest recommendation is that um, it's actually, um, I was, it's called Daily Replenishing. It's an SPF 30. That's great. Cause it's confusing out there. Sometimes you don't, there's so many products and so many different brands. You don't know what to choose when you, when you look online or even go to the drugstore. So I'm glad you broke that down too, between barriers and chemicals, That that's very helpful. Um, here's one for you, Amanda. How fast will I see results from Encella? Otherwise known as, what did you call it? The, the potty seat, the potty seat. The potty chair. The potty chair. The potty chair. The potty chair. So, chair. Um, you can see in, um, an improvement in as little as one session. We do recommend to get the full treatment is six sessions. That is what the FDA approval was for, was for a series of six sessions. Um, so that's going to give you that 95% reduction in symptoms. Um, so that's, that would be the, the, but we do have a lot of women who say one session and an added bonus. It's not FDA approved for this, but when you're tightening things up and you're tightening up the pelvic floor, you're also um, helping to increase your um, uh, sexual response. So you can have better orgasms as a added side effect from the insulin. Right. Not a bad side effect. That's great. <laughs> Not bad at all. Um, well, you know, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, so I'll probably wrap it up for this evening. Thank you both so much for your time and expertise on all of these important topics. I know they're critical for women just to understand and to live their best lives. So I really appreciate um, just all of your time on this and to everyone who joined us tonight. So if you'd like to schedule your appointment at our Greenville office with Amanda, you can call 864-558-0200. Um, again, that's 864-558-0200, or you can email us at greenville at forumhealth.com. Uh, if you'd like to schedule with uh, Tracy in our Madison office, you can call 608-420-5863. Again, that's 608-520-5863, or you can email us at madison at forumhealth.com. Um, also, in the meantime, visit us at forumhealth.com. We have tons of great content, recipes, blogs, all types of health information, and then make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. 
Amanda and Tracy, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care.